update to for my carnivore bodybuilding preparation. So I currently sit at 13 weeks out, roughly 90 days from my next bodybuilding competition on June the 2nd. I'm going to go for an update of what I'm doing right now, my diet, training, and anything that's changed since the last video. So as you may be able to tell, I'm quite a bit slimmer than the last video. So I have dropped about two or three kilos, um, a significant amount of body fat. Um, I could go through my digital body fat caliper measurements. I'm going to put them on the screen just now, put them around here somewhere. Anyway, as you can see, over the last few weeks, I've lost a tremendous amount of fat, especially from my thighs, which is quite interesting. I used to store a lot of fat around my thighs. Now I store more around my midsection, which isn't the worst thing. Um, I can feel my glutes coming in. I'm starting to get slight bits of detail around the hamstring area, which is pretty cool. Um, very subtle and it takes time, but I'm confident I'm going to meet the, the weight requirement for my competition, which is below 100 kilos or for you American folks out there, it's below 220 pounds. So that is the UK amount of weight that you can be for a classic physique competitor. So it's significantly less than what it would be if I was in the States. So as you can imagine, it's a lot more competitive here in the UK for bodybuilding. So to go for my diet, I'm basically eating now is a bit more meat than last time. So I've omitted eggs, omitted cheese. I actually do eat some soft cheese, so like some garlic herbs, bread sort of thing. It's pretty clean. It's not a lot of fat, very, very, very low carbs, a ton of, bit of protein, but I quite enjoy it. And I've been adding that to my chicken thighs, chicken breast, things like that turkey fries as well and i'm actually really enjoying it now the other thing i'm doing is i'm actually eating more beef quite a bit more beef i'm not fatty beef unfortunately so it is dry ass horrible stuff that you do not want to eat so i'm having to salt it quite liberally just to get it down it's not the most palatable things to eat given that it's got no fat in it really it's five percent fat which i'm sure about two percent of that actually renders off in the pan and doesn't really go back into my gut but still you know, it's working. So my, my diet is working for sure. Now in terms of my macronutrient intake, I'm above 300 grams of protein now. So I'm using that to maintain satiety levels. So I'm not waking up quite as hungry and it is quite effective. But as of right now, I'm consuming roughly 320 grams of protein per day. And that's an average over a, a one week period. Now I'm actually having also 40 grams of carbs. So I've dropped about 10 grams of carbs out of my diet. Woohoo. Great. Um, I don't notice any significant difference between adding them in and getting rid of them. To be honest, the carbohydrate insulin model doesn't seem to affect people like me that much that are very active. Now, if I added in 100 grams of carbs, yes, that's going to be a problem. And that's a lot of raw milk for me, guys. A lot of Greek yogurt. So not ideal for me. As of right now, I'm having about half a litre of raw milk as well. And I'm having a ice cream, which I make. And I've got a cool recipe for that one as well, which is worth a watch. All it essentially is, is on my higher days, which are the weekends, so Saturday and Sunday, we single cream and whey and raw milk. During the week, it's effectively raw milk and whey, so very low fat. As of right now, my fat intake, speaking of which, is around 140 grams on average. And what I'm doing is on the weekdays, I'm having lower fat, so around 120, 130 grams of fat here or there, ballpark it. I'm better off at this point eating a bit more to reach the tarty than trying to starve myself. I'm 13 weeks out. I don't need to be shredded now. I need to be shredded in 13 weeks. Ideally a couple of weeks ahead so I'm prepared and can make the right adjustments for the day. Now to assess my physique over the past few weeks, I'm going to put on some pictures on the screen. You have a look for yourself. Tell me, have I got leaner or not? Do I look better now or not? You tell me. Um, people are going to watch this and say, oh, well, you've increased the, the dose of creatine. No, actually, I've missed quite a few doses of creatine for your information, but thanks for asking. But yeah, basically, I'm making tremendous progress in my physique, and I attribute that just to getting the volume right for my goals. Now, I've increased it slightly, but not dramatically. Now, what I was doing before was about six or seven sets per, per session, four times per week. Now, it's between about eight and ten, give or take here and there. So I'm doing a bit more volume in the gym. And I've added in some slow walks. So that means for me walking the dog 10 to 15 minutes, maybe two or three times per week. And that's eking out a bit more fat loss than what I'd actually probably like at this point. So I'm in a very good position right now. And my starting weight was 111.5 kilos, I believe. Right now I'm sitting at about 107 kilos. So a pretty good drop. And what I found is I'm making progress in my muscle mass. 
Now, usually when you sort of get quite lean, so I'm around about 10% body fat right now, as you can see in the fit pictures here very clearly, um, you notice that you start to lose muscle mass disproportionately. So I'd say for a lot of people, they might lose maybe a quarter muscle and about three quarters fat. So for example, three quarters of a pound would be fat and a pound of a quarter of a pound of that would be muscle. Um, I'm not noticing that at all. I'm actually noticing my muscle mass is stable. And it's actually, I think, going up a bit. I'm feeling my body, feeling the firmness of it, you know, feeling my shoulders, my arms. I feel quite full, which is quite unusual for a diet. Now, it kind of goes contrary to the belief of, you know, the carb-centric model of bodybuilding, which is, you know, eat lots of carbs, stay full, your glycogen's topped up. Now, one mention I want to make in this video is I'm looking to get um, coached by the owner of my gym. His name's Marty Rice. He's coached lots of competitors before. He's a bodybuilder himself, so he's well experienced. And he commented recently on my photos and said, oh, you're looking very full. And I was like, yeah, I've eaten less than 50 grams of carbs for the last God knows how many weeks or months. Um, so yeah, it's it's quite interesting what happens when you get the diet right and you adjust the training volume appropriately. So a little takeaway here is just to get the diet right and the training volume. Don't follow someone else's plan. Don't follow my plan. My plan will not work for you which is why I don't do many of those what I eat in my day videos, because I'll get someone saying, oh, but you only eat, I don't know, one and a half pounds of meat when you're trying to bulk up. Yes, but I eat 300 plus grams of protein, 300 plus grams of fat, and 50 grams of carbs in that period of time. And I'm not doing that just through meat. I'm eating lots of different food sources, which I believe is optimal for growing muscle, in that you provide yourself with more cholesterol through the eggs, more riboflavin, which is vitamin B2, and lots of other useful things which seem to really positively impact my recovery level in the gym. So what I'm eating right now, chicken, beef, turkey, single cream occasionally, raw milk, soft cheese spread. Um, I think that's about it. So not a lot, maybe four or five different foods, but it seems to work really well. Now, I'm not craving anything. I don't miss cheddar cheese. I don't miss all that sort of stuff I'm used to. But what I'm finding is I'm starting to really crave more meat. So my meat intake right now is about 1.3 kilos per day. So it's a lot of food, guys. It's about three pounds of meat a day I'm eating. And it'll probably go up a bit higher than that as I get leaner. Um, now you're going to say, oh, doesn't that go contrary to the mass balance model that you preach? No. Funny enough, it doesn't. Because I'm actually eating leaner meats. And I'll find ways to cook meats, prepare meats, so that they'll be lower in fat content. So, for example, if I'm having a turkey fire right now, I'll switch to turkey breast further down the line. Maybe I'll reduce the, the raw milk intake. Maybe I'll cut out the high days, you know, that I have on the weekend. So I've got still got loads of levers to pull and the weight is coming off. Now I say weight and I do that deliberately because what I found in the past is I actually achieve a better result if I chase the scale weight down. Now for me, I'm a large competitor in my, my region, my category. In classic physique, the weight limit is 100 kilos. My last show, I was on stage about 98 kilograms. And that was 2021. I've gained about five or six pounds of muscle since then. So we're cutting it a bit fine in terms of the, the weight that I'm going to be on stage. Obviously, there's fasting, there's dry fasting, lots of different variables I can manipulate. So I will be ready on the day and below that weight cap. But it just goes to show, you know, we're not trying to be absolutely perfect and chase down the body fat caliper numbers as low as we can. We are, but I'm looking at the weight as well. So I'm using a number of different measures here. So I'm using the digital body fat calipers. And if these aren't reliable, and I think they're not reliable one day for some reason, I've got the manual ones. You know, I've used lots of different tools here, guys. I've got a bioimpedance scale, which I use to track my weight. From that, I insert that into a website, which basically gives me my body fat. I'm going to link that video just above here somewhere. Um, effectively, it's measure your body fat at home. So it gives you a few different examples of how to track that. That's been really useful to me so far. The other measurement I'm using is how my clothes fit. So this, I believe, is a 4XL. Um, so yeah, it's, it's baggy. It's a, it's a gym top for me, basically, um, with yellow head, of course. And yeah, I seem to wear this one, going out and about, going to the gym, easy to get on and off. Um, I can sweat quite a bit and it doesn't stick to me too much, which is quite pleasant. Um, so yeah, just wearing baggy clothes is quite pleasant. For me, I don't like tight stuff. I'm not vain. I'm not an asshole. I walk in the gym. I don't wear stringy vests and things, you know. I wear the right clothing for the job. And a little biohack here, guys, if you're just curious. If you wear something that covers a lot of your body, 
ideally if you can cover your head, your eyes even better. Um, just make sure you can still see, obviously, in the gym because bloody dangerous place, guys. Um, what I will say is that you're covering a lot of the blue light that could be emitted from the light in the gym. So wearing these sort of things, I'm reducing my blue light exposure, which positively impacts my my health recovery, my vitamin D status, all the things that just sap the crap out of your body. And I've noticed that really strongly for myself. Now, as an autistic individual, I'm very, very, very light sensitive. So you'll see me often wear these blue blocking glasses on the screens at nighttime, um, in the live stream, things like that. And they're very helpful for me. Um, it sounds like a bit of a gimmick, but try living a life where you're sensitive to every sense. It is a pain in the backside. So I'm trying to reduce my artificialness, if that makes sense, my unnecessary exposures to different stresses. Now, inappropriate light exposure is a stress. One other little biohack is actually use a red light panel, which I've just got to the side of me here. So what I usually do, guys, is actually sit here in the morning, have my breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, I usually have four meals at the moment, sometimes three, mostly four. And I'll turn that on. I'll have it about that far away from my face. And I'll be eating my dinner. Duh, 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 duh. And I quite enjoy it. It seems to have a positive impact on my skin. So everyone's wondering, oh, um, Jonathan, why do you bodybuild it? It's going to age you. Yeah, I've aged myself because of what I'm doing before. Now what I'm doing is not aging me as much. I'm going to go up close to the camera right now. You can see I have pretty much an absence of wrinkles. I'm 28 years old. I can't say the same for any other bodybuilders my age. So... As you can see, I'm I'm not significantly aged. Um, someone told me recently I was in my early 40s. Guys, I'm 28 years old. I look about 30, 32 maybe, at a push. And what you'll notice as well is my lose fat in my face, get more sucked in. Um, I will look my age. I happen to carry a lot of fat in my face. So do, do, so do the other males in my family. That's just genetic. It's just the way I am. Um, unfortunately, I look fatter on screen. You know, the screens do add about 10 pounds to you. So anyone that's met me in person will know that I'm I'm not a fat guy at all. So for those people that comment that sort of thing, you're, you're bloody daft. You're out of your mind. Um, but yeah, it's just a funny old world we live in nowadays with internet trials and stuff like that. But I'm now at the point where I've got rid of Facebook. So contacting me through there is impossible. Um, I do to get stalked online. I do get harassed online a lot. Is it annoying? Yes, it is annoying. In which case I have to block so many people each week which means the people that probably need my help that are nut jobs actually need to realize they're missing out on the information I'm providing them with, the free content I'm providing them with. And I'm still making videos, guys. I'm still pumping out uh, two live streams every single week without fail, as I have done for the past year. I'm also doing a video probably at least twice a week, sometimes three times a week, pre-recorded. So I'm putting out lots of content for you guys. So I don't seem to be um, running on empty right now. As I'm sure as time goes on, maybe that will change a little bit. Maybe I'll go down to just two a week, maybe, you know, something like that. But um, what I would suggest doing, guys, is to join my channel as a member. I have rates going from 99 pence, which is something like $1.30. And I have access to a private library of lots of different videos, which are very informative, including an advanced hypertrophy programming 101 video. Um, a few other things. So I actually put up some clips from old, you know, Q&As, things like that, like useful videos, which... I'll give you some insight so it saves you having to watch all my live streams and ask questions through that way. I appreciate a lot of you guys are American viewers, so watching me at two o'clock in American time, you know, maybe East Coast time, is quite tricky. So it gives you a bit of an insight there. Now, the Carnival Muscle Ramblings, which for those that are wondering, it is now a members only thing. So it's a live stream, it's members only. I've had to get rid of a lot of trolls from that. A lot of people asking irrelevant questions that nothing to do with carnival dieting um so it seems to be helpful in that sense i i'm trying to put out affordable content for you guys for free in most cases you know but i'm just trying best here but what i'll say is i do recommend joining my channel as a member for as little as one pound per month you know you get all my videos i'm gonna upload in the future so for example this week right now i currently have a video out which is carnival ice cream absolutely delicious guys i recommend that one it tastes really good but um, I actually upload all of my videos in advance to public viewing on my channel that way. So I'd recommend checking that one out. And I'm going to stop rambling now, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed that video. It gives you some insight into what I'm doing now. Update two, Carnival Bodybuilding Contest Prep. 
at roughly 13 weeks out. See you in a bit. Build muscle and lose fat on the carnivore diet. 